since my last video um dealing with my depression i feel like i owe it to y'all to come in and at least give y'all an update on what all is going on as far as my health is concerned and everything so like for a while now i have just really been trying to get back to myself I have started back working. If you've been here for a while and follow me on my um, other social media like a Snapchat or Instagram or something like that, then you know I've been in these monitors before. It's back in 2018. And back then they just said it was ex exhaustion. So here we are, however many years out, like I said, that's 2018, 19, 21, 22, three years out, and now we kind of know it wasn't just exhaustion we try they're, they're kind of getting down to the root of the cause this is why i stress y'all go to the doctor like do not sit at home and self-diagnose yourself on google like a lot of y'all do get on tiktok get on instagram and start taking all of these different type of supplements we'll get into that in a minute but go to the doctor if you and your doctor don't click find another one if your doctor don't have time to sit out and listen to you find a another one so i ended up going to the emergency room about three months ago i don't know it hadn't been quite three months ago about two months ago because i've been in this monitor ever since so it's going on about two months i've been in this monitor but anyway because i couldn't breathe and i knew it wasn't just from covid because once i took my inhalers my oxygen level came up a considerable amount well to normal but then it would keep bottom out and dropping and i noticed just my chest wasn't feeling right of course so i went to the doctor and they was like yeah your heart rate's not right you need to see a cardiologist so i sent the card cardiologist in the process of sending a cardiologist my doctor which be on it she was like yeah i really don't think it's per se something wrong with your heart i think it's another underlying condition messing with your heart but even though your blood work is immaculate i still want to run some tests the doctor ran some tests and sure enough she found some growth those nodules on my thyroid which brings me to the fact that i had lost a considerable considerable amount of weight i didn't have none of this and uh and you can see my collarbones and so i was wondering like why you know i thought it looked a little puffy you know from here down to here but i'm like why because normally when i lose weight it's like more like this but it's this and then it's been puffy down in here and i'm like why is this looking how it's looking to have it? but i didn't think nothing about it because every time i lose a considerable amount of weight my body looks different and i had lost about 25 pounds i was down to about 290 and if you wonder why i'm drinking the starbucks it's to help my heart rate come up so anyway my heart weight was dro dropping down in the 30s and 40s and it's been doing this for a long time like i was breaking out in these sweats and stuff this whole time i'm thinking it's something menopausal because you know or something like that premenopausal anything you know so i'm like it's just premenopausal that's why i'm breaking out sweating that's why i'm feeling how i'm feeling or whatever so on and so forth so kind of find out this whole time i've had these three things growing inside my neck and over time so what made her start checking my neck is my voice started I always kind of sounding scratchy and then when I turn left or right it feels like something is pressing against my throat or if I lay down flat or put my head all the way back it's like something is pressing against my throat and I can't swallow so when I started having difficulty swallowing she's like mm. um, she had an EDG done because of the pain the severe pain in my side and all the stuff trouble i had with covid i've had a colonoscopy done on the colonoscopy they found a polyp that they removed and they found that i had diverticulosis losis is the same thing they found where i had covid and my digestive system was messed up and i had enteritis of the large intestines then basically it was brought on by a viral infection mainly covid or whatever well i'm back at that intersection again haven't been here and been consistent like i said the pain has been so severe so after these three months of running tests they found those growths 
those okay so all of this is trying to basically my thyroid is inflamed it's got the growths on there i think they said it's three of them something to do with an autoimmune disease that we haven't got to the basis of yet because i'm just finding out about this like a couple of days ago it hadn't even been a week ago i found out about it so i still have to go i'm taking some medicine now and i have to go back to the doctor to discuss if they're gonna do surgery all that kind of stuff but i thought i felt like i needed to fill y'all in on it because it's a journey y'all will have to go on with me in order for me to stay consistent here because i get tired of not being consistent here because of how i feel and the only way for me to do it is to be transparent with you all and be upfront about it that way i can start being consistent here and just discuss it and put it out on the table versus just not posting because I'm feeling how I'm feeling or whatever. So whatever is going on with this contributed to my depression. Apparently your thyroid is the control center for a lot of things in your body. So if you don't feel good, you really need to go to the doctor. And again, my blood work with my thyroid was absolutely immaculate and it has always been good. The only way they knew something was wrong because my voice started changing. I don't know if you can tell it, but people close to me can tell it sounds like that scratchy sound that you hear now. It started changing and then um, the swelling and the difficulty turning my head like having difficulty swallowing but my doctor was smart enough to order a test she did an ultrasound and found the growths and the swelling and all the information she sent me to an endocrinologist let's get into the endocrinologist you need if your insurance pays for it you need to see an endocrinologist asap this is one reason I say go to the doctor and stop self-diagnosing because a lot of y'all are taking tons of supplements because Instagram told you to or uh, TikTok told you to or you saw it on Facebook. You need to stop doing that because, and I'm a re the reason I'm telling you to because t there is a such thing as taking too many supplements. You think you are being healthy, but you're really not. All the supplements that you are taking can be causing you more harm than damage because if you have too much of one thing in your body, it starts canceling out something else, and I cannot stress that to you. I am not a doctor. However, I do have some certifications as a health coach and other things you need to go to the doctor like stop self-diagnosing off of google some people that y'all following and listen to they're making stuff from clicks and views they watch somebody else's video that had almost a million views or two hundred thousand views so they said well let me copy what they said because i want the views and that's what they're doing they're not doing it because they know they're doing it for the clicks and views and, and it kills me how people will trust that before they trust God or trust a doctor. I was one of those, I'm a health person, so I want to take the right I didn't supplement. have too many supplements. I didn't have enough of the right supplements. And something else y'all need to be leery of since COVID come out. They say take zinc and take this and take this. Do not take too much zinc. If a nurse tells you to take all these supplements, no. Go to your doctor and find out if that's a supplement that you need. You can take a supplement like a zinc or um, whatever vitamin C or whatever that you need to build your immunity system for COVID but you need to be careful that you're not taking too much of it like how long have you been taking it have you been taking it for two years do you know your body has if your body has absorbed the right amount because it can start having an adverse effect in your body affecting your body and start being harmful instead of helpful and that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying not to take it. I'm saying know what, how much you are taking. Go to the doctor and get a checkup and see if you have too much, too little, or what in your body. The only thing right now I believe in taking in abundance is maybe CMOS. And I did talk to the endocrinologist about it. And I told her I like taking supplements that's healthy for me. But she told me the right thing to take. So I'm saying go get your blood work done and take what you need. Don't take what you think you need. Okay? Now that I got that out of the way. I am currently taking a medicine. I'm going to take the medicine. They're doing a trial period for three months to see if it will correct um, my autoimmune system from attacking my body. As far as the severe pain I have been in, I have been in such severe pain, I haven't hardly been able to walk. The pain is from diverticulitis, which is, I told y'all they found diverticulosis. It becomes, losis, it becomes diverticulitis particulitis once it becomes infected so the swelling the inflammation in my thyroid caused me to become constipated and i never have issues being constipated because i don't have a gallbladder 
that's another story somebody has asked me about. We'll get into that later. And so, once I became constipated, it infected those sacs. And not only that, I got, again, enteritis of the small intestines. So then that doubled my pain. Okay, now we're, we're talking about the pain being doubled. So then, I'm guessing I'm nearing the end of my back injection. So they said something about this in my thor thoracic lumbar somewhere is severely inflamed so that has added to the pain and those nerve endings they affect kind of like your sciatica run down your right side or whatever so my entire right side has been hurting so bad i haven't been able to function i'm on two different antibiotics i'm on um some for the nausea i think they gave me vinegar for the nausea because i have i have been getting sick to my stomach and all of that kind of stuff and i have became so bloated and like i said I had went from like about 290 and I'm back up to 317. So I am, I don't know how, if that's from bloatiness. I, well, we know we, I'm not constipated. We, I went through this detox of stuff they give me to clean out my bowel area to make sure there's no waste in there. So we got that done and the scale didn't move but like two pounds. So I'm probably about at maybe 215. So whatever going on, we, I'm going back through the weight loss thing again. Get that back on track. But I am going to fight any kind of autoimmune problem. I'm not going to claim it. I'm going to fight through it. So, if you knew me when I lost weight the first time, I am going to go back to some very extreme things that I did the first time that I lost weight. I was not on YouTube during the time or any other social media and this time I do want to share it with y'all so if you're here for it now's the time to click the subscribe button and get yourself ready if you want to lose weight we can do it together the only problem I'm having this time with the weight loss is I wasn't disabled like this before I had severe knee problems but I didn't have the back injury so I don't know how we're going to work this out but some kind of way with these disabilities and with the weight problem i am going to lose this weight i'm in the heart monitor a couple of more days it's right here in my shirt um yeah it's right here in my shirt monitoring my little ticker i can feel my heart when it does the flippity flops and know that you know it's fixing to drop and kind of be prepared for when i'm gonna pass out so they don't let me drive for. I don't get to do much. You know, like I said, I have returned to work. I work close to my home. So it's close enough that I can zip to work and I'm there. And then, you know, I can zip back home. No problem. Um, but they don't let me go farther than that because of the, the heart issue. And then I know not to leave if, it, if I can feel it. Because I can feel it before it alarms and know that my heart rate is going to drop out in the 40s. And I know I'm going to black out. So I know not to drive. Um, if I feel it doing it when I drive, because you can feel it when it skips about three beats, I can pull over and stop. And then if I s slowly black out or whatever, it'll pass and then I can get on home because I'm just aware because I can feel it and know when it's happening. And we kind of pinpoint that at the hospital when I was black out. So anyway, I'm not happy to be sick, but I'm happy that they know what's making my depression worse and what's making everything worse so keep y'all in the loop with this and the reason i'm doing that because if somebody else is going through it i want them to know that they are not alone because i tend to stay to myself and feel alone in situations because i don't have anybody to talk to so i'm going to talk to to y'all to my friends so i am here for you and you can be here for me and we can get through this together and in the meantime, we're going to watch some TV. I have gotten so into TV shows, y'all. I used to be really big into reality TV. Now I'm into these shows. So that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, I hope this can help somebody. I'm trying to think if there's anything I missed. I think I told y'all about everything. So 